so what we are going to do next is we are going to start with uh, building the database so we now have some basic idea of how we can design the business logic what happens when we hit a url uh, how the template is rendered etc uh, but we don't what we don't have is we don't have some uh, we don't have any interaction so we don't have any uh, information that we are providing as input and we do not have any way to store the data that there, there's no interaction there's just blank pages uh, simple pages that are being rendered right so it is mostly uh, information that is being thrown towards the client that is you from the server so you are getting the uh, re return response you are getting an html page but there's no uh, there is no input from your end or there is no data that is being stored from your end or there is no form that is being asked from you right so for to be able to have some amount of interactivity or some amount of dynamic information that is being stored and then rendered on your page we first need to design a database so in order to design a database let me first go to my command line so everybody can open their command line I'll just make sure that my migrations are also up to date. You don't need to run this command now. I also need to create the super user like Sathamesh has already done, so that I am at the same page as all of you. Okay. Now, uh, so what are we doing next? Uh, how it works is I go down into my library manager folder, and uh, if you remember, uh, like Prathamesh also mentioned, and we had spoken of yesterday, the models.py file is what we need to edit. The models.py file. is where you are going to define your uh, uh, your database design in a pythonic fashion right so uh, sort of this is a file where you are going to dump all your database design uh, how this works is that django gives you a way of uh, talking to your database using the python language you don't have to write raw sql queries you don't have to uh, run raw sql queries on your sqlite 3 or your mysql database uh, the django framework itself gives you something called an orm which is an object relational mapper an object relational mapper is an inbuilt tool or module that allows you to interact with your database but you don't have to write raw sql queries you can actually write a uh, very pythonic code so you can use classes functions methods attributes variables etc and you can design a database you can interact with the database you can uh, you know write to the database do all the create read update delete uh, operations and all of this you will be doing when and all the while you are doing this you will be using your python language only so uh, you can call it an advantage or a disadvantage if you are using django there is uh, to a, to a very large extent uh, there is absolutely no need for you to even know how to write sql queries or how to write raw sql uh, code you just can write python code and you are done once you are done you can uh, i mean to a certain extent you can you can deal with python code once you are done uh i mean once you go to a point where you are advanced enough you can then you know sort of optimize and and work with raw sql queries to sort of optimize certain stuff but uh, otherwise you don't even need to know sql queries in general uh, so right 
so you are basically going to write python code and your orm is equal to internal tool that will basically do the translation of python code to sql query internally and then deal with the database right so how do we how do we uh, create so the first step is creating the the database which we did with the migrate command the second is creating the tables inside it the tables the columns the fields etc so how do we do that we are basically going to be uh, writing out a python class so if any of you attended the the pre recorded sessions with object oriented programming uh, sessions in yuk you will know how to write uh, a class right you will have basically the keyword class followed by the class name and then you will write out internal methods or attributes inside it so what we are doing here is we are going to basically be designing a a library management system so you want to be able to store Uh, your member details and you want to be able to store your books that you have in your library right so we'll first start by creating the member table so a table in your sql database is represented by a class in your orm or your model.py file so when i say i want a mem when i say i want a member table i am defining a member class right i will then uh, inherit so if you if you studied inheritance in any of those modules uh, you will understand that uh, classes can inherit from internal uh, packages or classes that you already have so models dot model is an internal model parent class that you can inherit from because there are a lot of internal functions and methods that you can use and the models method also tells django that this is a very specific kind of a class which is uh, it is representing a table in your sql database right so we start off with class member which is one of your tables now we want to specify the columns in your table so how do we do that we define uh, attributes or we define variables of that particular class and we do that by defining it like a regular variable so let's say we want a member uh, a member will be your library member and you want to store details right so what sort of details will you store you generally store his name phone number maybe some details like address etc but let's go with name email and phone on a very basic level that is what you will need to store information so you will have name so let's see i am defining a comment you don't need to copy this but i am just defining what i want so i want a name i want an email and i want a phone uh attribute right so these are the three values the three columns that i need in my member table now how will i so obviously a column in an sql table also needs to understand what kind of data it will store to be able to tell the orm or to tell the sql uh, database that we also define the uh, the data type that will be storing in in that variable so for example let's say name my name will be of type characters so it will be a type called char field char field is an internal uh, attribute an internal uh, method the internal method so you don't have to worry about why it is called char field where it comes from etc uh, these are feature sets that are provided by django django gives you certain functions or certain uh, you know factory functions or utility functions and you can use them to define the kind of data types that you want in your attributes or in your column so char field is one the most common one because you want to be able to store strings or characters in a particular column and you will pass it the argument max length because you usually want to tell how many characters you will store in that particular column for that particular row right so i for now will store will allow 255 characters that's the max that you can store similarly email also we'll use char field for now and i'll use the same argument here uh if you can't see and maximize it a bit and i'll use phone number and again for phone number 
I'll use the same field type, right? So uh, we now have the columns defined. I don't need the comments, so I'll I'll just remove the comments. Right. So now we have the uh, we have the fields defined. So this is the class definition. The class definition tells you and tells Django what type of table that we are creating. When you are using this class in your code, you will be instantiating a class. Right. You you have classes or class definitions, and you have instances of that class. So every instance of this class will basically be representing one particular row. In the database, in the table, so every I, row. I, I, have, I have one question. Yes. I mean, if you look at the right hand side of all these three variable, three variables, everything Correct. is same. Can't we do in a Correct. one line? Can't we uh, specify the, them in one line instead of writing them separately? No, because uh, because they are separate. Uh, they will be separate columns. That is one. And secondly, because they have like, uh, I mean, there's probably a way to do it. But you will end up with one line in one go, uh, which will not be very readable. That is one. Secondly, uh, because uh, and I'll show you how the migrate command will now use this to be able to generate a table in your in your database. So you don't want the migrate command doing something funny or something weird. So even though you, I mean, you could maybe say variable name comma variable email comma variable phone equals model care field. But uh, we don't want uh, it to, you know, act funny, do something weird, or you don't want to destroy the readability of what you're seeing. So once you have, uh, once your application has many uh, tables and columns, it is easier to just quickly go through your models.py file and look at it, saying that okay, these are the four columns that I have in the member table. So it is easier to look at, easier to read, uh, easier to understand quickly by looking at it uh, instead of. Uh, instead of shortening it, uh, and you would save some lines of code, but you will be destroying the readability and the ease of understanding that you will have when your application grow, grows larger, right? Plus, uh, I, at least as of now, I can't think of a way to do it in one line for uh, for like these kind of uh, assignments. Uh, you could probably use comma comma based. Comma separated values and and assign them to multiple variables. That is possible in Python, but you wouldn't want one long line of everything in one line, right? Because it will be difficult to understand. So, uh, separate lines is definitely recommended. That's a standard that any model of py file will file will have, right? So, um, so this is what we have. Uh, we have a member table, and we have three properties, or three columns, or three attributes. Uh, if you want to uh, sort of, uh, if you not yet typed it, or you are finding it difficult to type, I leave the GitHub link in the chat again, just so that you have uh, a simpler time just looking at the models.py and copying the relevant code. Please don't copy everything. Just copy the part that uh, that I have done. So you can only you only need to copy from line four to line eight, which is the class member. That should be models, not model. Yes, correct. So that would have thrown an error, right? So it is I've imported models. So it is a models module that I'm going to use. So it is not model. It is models, correct? From which line to which line we need to copy, sir? The same as the class member. So class, uh, so line four to line seven or eight in the GitHub repository will sort of give you the same same content as what I've written now. Uh, once that is done, you save your file in models.py. You go to your uh, command line. Hopefully, you don't have your run server running. If you do have it running, you need to close it down. And you need to run the command Python manage dot py make migration, right? This is a command. I'll paste it in chat again. Uh, 
uh, if you remember, we had run this once yesterday, but it didn't give us any output in general because there were no migrations to do or create. I'll tell you what it does. Please paste this command in your terminal, in the correct terminal where your manage.py file is located. Please make sure you are in the same folder as the manage.py file. Please paste this command. Please press enter. And it should give you something of this sort of output. If you have saved your models.py file correctly, it will tell you that there were some mi migrations for library manager app. Uh, there was some file called 0001.initial.py and there was a model that was created for member. Right? So, what it did was, uh, like I told you last time, uh, there's something called a module, there, there's a module called ORM, the object relational mapper, and it is handling all the interactions between your Python code in your models.py and your database. We have already created the database, that is a db.sqlite file that we have, but we now did some changes to that database, right? So we made those changes in the model.py file, but nothing has changed in the db.sqlite file. In order to make those changes, your Django should understand what those changes are. To, for it to be able to you know, consume and understand what those changes are, you run this make migrations command. The make migration command tells Django that, boss, you need to go look at models.py. There was something that had happened before, but now there are some changes. Please make sure that you are okay again. So please only look at the changed part, not the earlier part. If you find any changes, then please create a migration file, tell your ORM what to do and what to run and what to create and then stop there, right? So we created something called a migration file. You go back to your spider, you can actually look at your migration file. You can go to the migrations folder in your library manager app. You can double click on 001 initial and you'll see that it has a lot of Python code that is automatically created. What this is doing is, again, using a very object-oriented approach, it is telling Django to basically do a few things for, for making those changes reflect in your db.sqlite file. It tells it to create the ID column, which, is, which comes by default. You're not specified it, but the ID column is always there by default. That is a primary key. You, it tells it to create a name column, an email column, and a phone column, and do all of this for a member table, create model with a member name, right? Please do not change anything here because it will mess things up. Uh, but this is just to show you that these are the changes that Python has recommended based on our changes in model.py, right? This is, this is internal magic that you don't need to be concerned about unless you're dealing with lots of advanced uh, migration level issues. Sir, can you show that the creation of here? Yeah, just wait here. Right. In the meantime, the others can, I'll not change the screen, uh, but the others can run a very familiar command that you already run called manage.py migrate. So you have to run Python space manage.py space migrate. So what will this do? This will go back to your migrations folder. It will check if there are any new migration files that have been created since the last migrate command run. And it will actually go and apply it. So what it does is it goes, it checks all these internal applications of admin, auth, content types, library manager, sessions, etc. It then checks if there was any new file created since the last launch. And then it found that there was one that was created called 0001 initial. And it applied that migration. So what it did, it applied the migrationary changes that you had defined onto your dbsqlite file. Right? Until now, the migrations were not applied to your db file. So you can't just do make migrations and forget. You have to uh, also run the migrate command to be able to see the changes in your db. If you had only done make migration, no changes would have shown up in your... Yeah, yeah, that is happening. Yeah. Okay. So, so in that case, what we need to do? You need to run your make migration command first. You need to then run your migrate command second. Python manage or UI migrate. So I'll switch back to the chat and I'll wait for everyone to make sure and tell me that everything has happened, run, and everything is working fine. So working fine in the sense that you've not got something that looks red 
or says error or says exception cool so uh, once you've done this you should be able to see so now where will you see these changes so there are a couple of ways to see these changes one the easiest way is run your server because this is the most user friendly way you can run your server using the run server command once you run your server using the run server command you can go you can click on your browser you know which website to visit that is localhost 8000 open your admin interface like you did in the in the earlier session it is not creating that 001 init file right so i'll come back to you can you share your screen please quickly yeah yeah i'm sharing you were screen you run both the command you were screen is uh, active sir yeah have you run both the command yeah, yeah i run i run both the commands uh on make migration did it say that the 0001 file was created no i will show you so can you open your model.py file sir yes i am opening i will i will show this one Uh, no, I can see that you have an output on the top saying no changes detected. Yeah, yeah. So your models dot py file. See, sir, models dot py. Okay. Can you go to spider again? This seems to be a case where your models is in some other folder and you are editing it in some other folder. Yeah, probably. So can you please make sure that you are editing the right um, file? I will show you. You seem to have an empty file and you just pasted it. And uh, you don't have your imports as well, so it's not. The models there. file is here. Library Correct. Management. It is the wrong place. You need to go into Library Manager and then open the models. dot py file that is already located there. Yeah, this one. Yes. Correct. So please paste everything that you added into your original file into that models. dot py. Do not remove anything that is already there. Please run both those commands and everything should work. Right. Please do not replace everything. Mm -hmm. Please add it to the bot. Yeah, that I have done. Yeah, thank you. Just save it. Uh, this should fix it for you. So this file has to be removed. Your original, the 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 original models that you had on your mm -hmm. top folder that you don't need, you can delete it. Yeah, I have deleted. So generally, ninety nine percent of the time, you don't need to create files. There are almost all the files are created for you. There will be some specific files that need to be created, like templates, etc. Okay, but the major files are already created. Anyone else having any issues? Everything working fine for most of them. Okay, so we'll go back to uh, go back to the to what we were doing before. So I forgot one step that I needed to tell you about, which is editing the admin dot py file. Admin dot py file is a file that contains any customizations to your admin interface your admin interface was the mm -hmm. interface that you logged into using your username and password right so uh, in your admin interface you can open your admin.py file which is inside library manager app it already exists please open your admin.py files in the meantime right now what you need to do is you need to import your models and then one second you need to import your model so from dot model so your existing model you will import the book model sorry the member model you don't have the book model yet and the member model will be registered on your admin interface how do you do that you use the admin tool which is already imported for you you tell it to register the model that i am importing from my custom app so i give it the model name i use the internal methods admin.site.register and this this should be enough right so this will sort of tell django that boss i want to be able to see the member model and all the rows all the data that is stored in the member model on my admin interface once you save this 
you can go back to your terminal uh, you know what to do you need to run your server once you run your server you can go back to your browser your browser should have your uh, your admin interface hit your admin interface uh, login if you have to login my session was already active so it, it allowed me to continue and it will show me the members uh, members model showing up here in the interface so it will show the app name library underscore manager it will show me the members model here uh, hopefully everyone has reached here i'll just click on it i'll show you the interface in the meantime you can make sure that you can see the interface and you can interact uh, this is sort of a very simple way to add, delete, and update your database data information. Uh, so Jang the, one of the major advantages of having Django is that you can build a very simple uh, you know, data entry application without even having to write much code. So I've added one model, one admin interface change, and I don't even have to add views.py my admin interface automatically gives me an interface to edit and add and delete information. How does it do that? It gives me this pre-populated uh, template and you know interface. I can add a member here. I can tell that my member name is uh, Aniket uh, or Ankit. I can add my email, ankit at ankit.com. And I can add my phone number, which is plus nine one nine eight nine four 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 six seven six seven, right? And I can save it. Once I save it, it shows up as a first member object or the first member row in my database, right? So you can sort of play around with this if you want to. You can add multiple things. The only thing that remains is uh, sometimes when my as a super user, when I'm looking at my database or looking at what I need to do, what what sort of members I've signed up. I want to be able to see the proper representation of my object. So what is this? This member object is the instance of my member class. Like I mentioned before, every row in your database is a instance of your member class or your uh, model class, right? If I want for any class in Python, if I want to change how the class uh, is represented on the command line or anywhere, I, I can use a special internal private restricted method called str and we'll, we'll change that now to be able to see a more better way of looking at this object or this instance. I hope everyone is up till here, they are okay with the setup. You need to and show us the, this admin pi file. Okay, uh, you don't have to see the admin.py file. The repository that I've given you contains the admin.py file if you look for it in GitHub. But if you want to see the admin.py file, I can show it to you here as well. But otherwise, does anybody have any issues? Remember one is done, correct, cool. That is the, the only one that you need to do for now. So we are registered in admin. We have, we have already created one uh, model. Uh, what we need to do is we need to go back to models.py because we want to change how the model met, how the model class is re being represented in the admin file. In order to do that, what you need to do is you need to define a method called a restricted or a private method called underscore underscore str underscore underscore followed by the self argument for that class. And inside that, you will return the uh, the way that you want to display the, the object. So for me, when I look at the object, I want to quickly understand who this member is. So what I can do is I can return the name of that member. So self.name is basically the, the object-oriented way of referring to the class attribute here, which is the name property of the member method, or the member class. So self dot name will give me this name, the value stored in this name variable here, and it will show up there on the admin as well, or even when you're using it in your in your uh, code, in your command line, etc. It will show it as a fancy name. Otherwise, it is difficult to understand which object it is, who it belongs to, etc. 
I've made this change. Again, this change will also be visible in your GitHub repository that is already sent. So you don't have to wait for me. Uh, you can add this one method, which is the double underscore str double underscore. That is a double underscore there, right? And once I've saved this, I can go back to my uh, admin interface. If you refresh it, it will show me that the name is Ankit, right? So this now changed. Why? Because my method was added and the method is giving you a very fancy way of rendering the name of that particular object. So you can try uh, adding few more members if you want to. I'll just quickly show you. Uh, this is the sort of uh, uh, interface to sort of edit your uh, database row. If it's a care field, uh, then you are given a you know a text box. If there's a number field, then there'll be certain validation that will be applied. So uh, apart from care field, you can have uh, you know email field, you can have URL field, you can have text field, which is a larger text box, and we'll see that in the next model. You can have other model uh, you know attribute types or data types and uh, what they do is when you're entering data from your code or from the admin the data is automatically validated so if i go here if i were to go to a character level that is beyond 255 then it will sort of throw me an error saying that you know you can't enter more than 255 characters so those validations are what django already is giving you using those care field method right I can also delete the rows from here quickly. If there are more than one more than one row, I can sort and you know delete multiple entries, etc. So that is also possible from this interface. So this is a very quick and dirty uh, default interface that you can use for you know data entry application. So if you have a if you have a very simple application that just needs data entry, uh, Django is a good application to web, web framework to use, right? Yeah, so let's go back to uh, to our models and see if we can add more more. If we can add one more model, so we have a member model now. We want to be able to store books, right? So we want to be able to create a book model. So I'll quickly create one. I'll just uh, move back. To my file as well. Sir, one show admin page. So I've already sent the link to the GitHub repository. Can you please scroll up in the chat and have a look at the admin.py file there, please? Uh, in the meantime, I can just make sure that I'm typing out the correct model. Please scroll up in the chat. You should be able to find the uh, GitHub repository that I sent. If you can't find it, please let me know and I'll send it again. Right. So now I have a class book. I can add, what can I add? I can add the title. So title also, I will keep it as model dot care field. Again, I just keep it at 255 just because I want it as large as, as far, long as possible. I'll quickly copy paste these fields because I don't want to spend time typing them. Uh, right. Okay. So what I want for the book is I want a title. I want to be able to store uh, who is the author. So I want to store the author name. Uh, I want to store the ISBN number, which is the uh, you know a unique. Uh, identifier for every book that is ever published and I want to be able to store the uh, genre or the category of the uh, book right uh, last but not the least I will show you another field type which is the text field so I want a description field to store a larger piece of text that that can store more information. So I want to be able to type out the description of the of the uh, book. And like we did last time, I'll have a string method here. It'll have a self argument. And I will 
here also i will return the title of the book so that i can quickly understand which book the object or the database row is talking about right and i'll save it i will circulate the uh, github link again so that if you don't want to type all of this you can quickly just copy it's already shared on the chat latest yeah i just do it again uh right so my link directly goes to model.py just i mean is the same is the same repository it's fine uh you just need to copy the part that talks about the book model right so the book model is about from where is it from it's from line number 13 to line number 21 right that is what i typed out exactly right now in front of you save the save the uh, models.py file now and i this time i'll not do it i'll wait for you to do it for me you need to do the migration and make sure that the migration is applied on your database right so now i'll just show you as a sample i've saved my model now when i go back to let's say my uh, uh my my website or my admin uh it still does not show me the uh the book model that i have added right so we need to do three things we need to be able to you need to uh do the make migration you need to migrate and you need to update your admin.py file so i'll wait for all of you to do that and you will now tell me what i need to change in admin.py so that it will show up here before you do any changes to admin.py first run the make migration command second run the migration command then change the admin.py file and then please let me know what i need to do so that i can get the same output as you shouldn't take more than 5 minutes sir show so, the admin for models file the models file i sent a link in the chat you can have a look at that you don't need to wait for me uh, it's on line number 13 in the link that i shared in the chat basically all of the class book all of class book right so uh, once you're done with the migration and the admin registration please let me know and please tell me what i need to do what code i need to type you can even share your screen if you're done sir how to register nothing is showing when we click it where are you clicking sorry uh, this uh, github so the link that i send is not opening up no it is opening but it is no not active link basically for registration purpose no no you misunderstand what i'm trying to tell you that link that i sent you is not for registration it is for models.py content so you are asking me to show the models.py instead why don't you have a look at that link it has the models.py content in full you just okay. have to copy paste the class book out of that content yes 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 hello sir yes you yes, have added the book successfully cool okay so so somebody told me from models import book and then admin dot site dot register so where do i do this correct okay in admin dot py i basically import uh i import the book so you are already importing from dot model so you don't need to add a new line you can just say comma and i want another i want to import one more class which is member comma book so you don't need to have multiple lines for every import you can just add it in the same line because you are using you are importing it from the same place your source is the same so you can put it in one line right and like we registered member it will you have to register book right so once you have registered you should be able to see it in your in your admin please just add a couple of books and just fill in some data uh, i'll also do the same i'll go to my admin and i'll see if things are showing up correct so books is also showing up so books is the interface for me to uh, have something but like i said i didn't do the migration so you just told me the admin.py i didn't do the migration so it started showing this error at me that you know we don't see the table so how how should we show you what is happening right 
so this is the error that will show up if you don't do a migration the proper migration so i will first run make migration because i created a new model so i need a new migration to tell my migrate command what to do and then i will run migrate which is my actual application of that migration this is done now hopefully it should work uh, okay so i need to run my server and yes so it is showing up so this is the books interface right now there are no books so i'll add a book and in the add interface you'll see that there are care field uh, you know care field interfaces so so uh, okay uh, lord of the rings is one of my favorite books so i'll add that author name is grr tolkien grr for short isbn number is about 13 or 15 digits long so i'll just add something that looks close to a isbn number right so i think i added something larger just now genre is uh, let's say fantasy and this is a description so you can see that the admin interface automatically detected that the description is a text field and not a char field so it gave me a larger you know a larger text box using javascript to to sort of type larger amounts of text with no limitation so this is a fantasy novel about hobbits so i'll save that uh what else um, i'll add one more book so that we have some database to to uh, work with um, what is that that other popular one game of thrones and uh, i forget the author name so i'll just call him that guy and i'll be number again is some random number genre again is fantasy description is a uh, really long novel with a tv series and save that and now i have two books so you can also enter some some data so that we have some data to play around with right so uh we now have books and we now have members sir i have some problem in this uh, model file okay yeah when the uh, server is not also able to run it so can you paste the error in the chat so oh, i'm uh, okay i will put the error in the chat right everyone else have they been able to uh, re register their book model get the migrations correctly and uh, be able to enter the data mm, invalid syntax so sir you either have something wrong with your syntax which is that there is no space between def and double underscore so you okay. need to put a space there yeah 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 sir actually my laptop is not showing a library uh, library manager is not showing can you show, show me that uh, initial dot uh, python file which one what what is not showing on your laptop library mem oh library member change karne ke liye aata so it's not showing you have to okay, show, so show it the code so when you when you visit this interface can you see members or books or whatever No, so it's not showing a library manager. Option is not showing in my car. If you if I run that. Okay, uh, so it's not showing a library manager already. Okay, so yes. then your admin dot py is supposed to have some things to change. So you need to add these three lines. Okay, sir. Dot models import member book admin dot site dot register member admin dot site dot register book and any more models that you need. right moving on uh now what we are supposed to do is uh, we already know how to like register your models how to migrate them how to see them here but generally what happens is nobody wants to look at a boring admin interface you generally want more features you want an interface that looks more fancier you want more flexibility in defining your templates 
changing your HTML, making it look better or different from what it is looking right now. You may not want the Django administration sort of uh, title to show up here. So you would want to design your own templates. So obviously, uh, Prathamesh in the earlier session has already showed us what uh, what we need to do. We already have one template as well, and we have a URL as well. But let's go back and change it a little bit so that it shows us all the books, right? So now. Now we have some data in our database. We have some business logic in place. We want to be able to see the data that is stored and not just the default data that we had entered before in the hard coded in the function. So what Prathamesh had done was just to show you an example. He had hard coded stuff in the views.py so that he could show you how the uh, how the the templating and how the views logic work, right? But we don't want this hard coded stuff. We want to be able to see what has been added. So tomorrow, if somebody, if my super user or my librarian came in, added new books into the interface, I don't want to keep seeing the biology and the scilab book. I want to be able to see what new books were added. And if any changes happen, the changes should also reflect on that template, right? So for that to happen, you need to be able to do few things. You need to be able to run a query using your ORM logic. You need to run a query and get all the books from your database. And then once you've got all the books from your database, you need to be able to pass them into your context and to your templates. And in your templates, then it needs to be the correct Jinja templating language to be able to show them. Right. So we have done parts of this. We now connect it all together and I'll show you how to run a query. Is everybody uh, done up till this stage? So I, I hope that we are not, uh, nobody is falling behind. Sir, so, what you have added in views, uh, I mean, just one or two minutes before. I didn't add anything. I didn't make any change. So if you're getting an operational error, most probably you didn't do your migrations correctly. Can you do make migrations and then migrate? Yes, sir, I have done. I got it. Yeah. Okay. So now the next step is changing the views and running a query, right? So what we'll do is we'll run the query first and then make the changes to, to Prathamesh's code a little later. So you need to now add a line to make the query. So how do you make a query? You first import the, the book model that you have created. How do you do that? From dot models import book. You can also import member because you have already created. You might as well import it here, right? And you can write a query by using uh, specific uh, ORM based uh, methods and attributes. So to be able to get all the books, uh, for now, let's keep it simple and get all the books. So I'll type in a variable called all books to store all the queried books that I get all books equals book dot objects dot all and open with open bracket close bracket so what does this do uh, it takes the book object uh, it takes the book class which tells it which table it wants to query dot objects is a is a sort of a utility method dot objects dot all tells that i want to run a query that says select star from book that is the query that you're running so this is uh, equivalent to select star from uh, table table name. What is the table name? That is book or small book, whatever. Right? My my SQL is not that good because I am usually a Django developer, but this is roughly what the SQL query will look like if it were to be translated into SQL. So it gets you it gets you all the books from the book table, right? And because this is Python, we can basically deal with them like we deal with uh, standard data types and data structures. So we can store them in a variable. Now, what will we do? We can then pass all the books to the template using the context. We'll use the same variable called all books. You can call it any other variable but uh, we'll use the same one 
to avoid more confusion and what i have done is i have passed it the variable so the context is always a python dictionary so you can't change that but you can add any data structure within it so you can give it a key and the value can be a list it can be it can be integers anything so in this case i wanted to uh, show all the books so i am passing it all books variable which i have already created here right and the context is already passed to our books.html correct so have these changes been made and are you done with these changes save the file make sure that you saved it please let me know once you're done with this i will minimize it maybe sir i am stuck in sir so can you please jayant can you please check your models.py does your models.py file have a book model if it has a book model then it can be imported it has sir but it is not uh smith we are not supposed to do any migration Uh, if I said migrate, I'm sorry. It must be an error. There's no migration required after editing the views or py. Uh, Jayan, can you can you share your screen? Yes, sir, sir I can, sir. Once. Sorry, someone was saying something else. Uh, sir, after saving the file, so we will run the server again. Nothing else is required. Migrate. Uh, yes, you can run the server again, but in general, please wait, and I'll tell you what oh, to do. Okay. Sir, can I do, sir? You can share your screen now. Correct. So your book is being imported here, right? It works, right? Does it work or not work? Can you show me models, models, models? Remember, so you not created the book folder, the book met, uh, the book class yet. Please create the book class. Please look at the GitHub repository. It has the book class. Please copy that book class here. and you should have the book class ready once you have the book class ready then only you can import it so if you remember i told you 2 minutes ago that you don't have book in your models.py which is why it is showing up as an error right yes i will tell you what to edit i just need to make sure that everybody is on the same page is everybody done till this point have they edited the views.py file okay uh cool so going back to the the views.py file is done you now need to go to the template that you have created so you have templates you have library manager inside templates then you have books.html which is already created please double click on that so what you need to do here is you already have a context variable for all books which contains a list so consider all books to be a list of all the database entries that you have now you want to be able to display all the books in one sort of in one you know one after the other so if you had a list of values and you wanted to print those values in python how would you write them what would you what kind of code would you write to print all the elements of a list one after the other can someone tell me Which? loudly because i am not i am not looking at the chat so i don't know what you are typing we can use a loop you can use a loop loop yes for loop. what kind of loop for loop for loop for loop okay so that is the correct way to go about if you have multiple uh, multiple elements to show the simplest and the most you know uh, basic way to do it would be run a for loop on that list or that uh, iterable and display all the elements inside so we'll do the same thing i'll just quickly paste Um, the templating language reference of the django documentation you don't need to look at it now i'm just pasting it for reference um right so we have the books title we have the ordered list and we have each element right but we want to run the for loop and we want to be dis want to display one element per for loop iteration right so how will we write that in in django templating language you can actually write you, you can write syntax that is very similar to python code so you'll uh, for variables you saw that we use double braces for for computational statements we'll use 
curly braces percentage percentage curly braces right and we will write some limited amount of code in these kind of uh, syntax for uh, i just use a variable my book just so that nobody is confused for my book in all books because the context variable is called all books so we are using it in the for loop the for loop like you see is very similar to the python for loop right so the templating language is very similar even jinja is very similar now i want to be able to show just one book for every iteration so i'll remove this second li option and i will end the for loop so this is something that is not the same as python so i need an end for because my uh, templating language needs to understand where the where the syntax started and where it ended and where html is starting where html is ending right inside this i am going to use a variable my book because in the for loop i declared the variable my book right so i am using the variable my book what this will do is inside an ordered list tag it will run a for loop and it will create multiple li elements for every book element in the all books list correct right? and it will show up all the book you know without having much uh, right having to write much more html code you can display everything in one go so i'll save this so please save this uh, please write this out and i'll wait for some time in case you're done typing you can run your server you can open slash books so localhost 8000 slash books in your browser so folks who are already done with these changes everything should work fine you should save all your changes in books.html and news.py you should run your run server command in your terminal you should be able to see your browser and open the slash books url because you remember that the slash books url is the only one that you add it correct correct so uh, like it like i said it will show all the books in one go if you want to sort of see see why we did this you can go back to your admin interface you can uh, add some more books like four or five more books or two more books and they will also then then show up on your terminal so uh, you are you are going to do this one by one obviously so it will it will look like you are doing this one after the other but if i were looking at your page and you added something in the background in the database and if i hit refresh from my uh, browser it will immediately update it and i'll be able to see the updates that is why you would want a dynamic database driven application in the first place uh please let me know if you are done copying it from the screen uh, i can sort of move back to chat and sort of uh the link that i added for the django pro the django documentation gives you more details about the templating language it will give you uh, like you know it will give you more syntax related stuff you can do a lot more things you can use variables you can assign value to variables you can uh, access elements of a list uh you can filter values you can do some string manipulation in template so a lot of stuff can be done in the template because the templating language is pretty mature uh, generally though it is good practice to only use the template for rendering the data and not manipulating the data because your logic should be located in your views and your template should only be doing the rendering part okay so can i done, share done. the screen once Let me share my screen. What is the issue? Ah, uh, that in the when I'm going to the book URL, uh, that only one two three four number is coming. Name of the books are not coming. One two three four number is coming, but name is not coming. Okay. Uh, right. Let's see what it shows up for me. Or do that. So it is showing up here. In your case, can you share your screen? I'll stop sharing mine. Just one second. Please share your screen. Yes, can you show me your views dot py? No, sorry. Can you show me your template HTML template? Let's go one by one. You have li for booking on my all books. Uh, book one. So you are you are you are using a variable called book one, but your your variable in for loop is my book. Now because book one is a variable that has not been declared before, and the template does not know what the my book one uh, variable is, so it displayed a blank value. 
So you need to type in my book, right? Correct, right. sir. So, yes. Ah, uh, sir, I did the same thing, and uh, it showed book object, but uh, when I change it to my book dot title, it shows the correct title. Correct. Ah, uh, so there's a reason for that. In views, when we are running a query. the the result of this query is basically the instances of the book class so you have an object so you have a list of objects in all books so your book each element of book in your all books is an an instance of the uh, book model right so the book model every instance will have the title value the author name value etc so you are passing all of that to your templates and your templates can access elements of the book so you can say book dot title book dot author name book dot isbn number etc and you can also access that what you have not done and why you had to do dot title was you didn't add your str here which is why it shows up as book object book object 1 book object 2 book object 3 book object 4 uh you can do it now if you want to Uh, it is not necessary it's not compulsory so it's fine what you have done is also uh, it's also very used common it's also very commonly used you can say my book uh, dot title right so uh, in fact let's i i'll show you something that works the same way so i'll say book dot title and i will also want to i also want to see the author so i'll say book dot my book dot author and i will encase it in uh double braces right and i'll save it you don't have to do this i'm just showing it as an exercise just to show you uh, how uh, the area is not visible so what i did was i already had my book here i added the dot title attribute i added a colon and i added another variable for my book dot author you don't need to do these changes it's just something fancy that i'm showing you just to show you how it changes So I also want to see the author along with the book. I don't want the book name only. In that case, I made these changes, saved them, and because it is just an HTML change, I don't need to do anything fancy. And I click here, and it gives me nothing. Why does it give me nothing? Because my author name is not shown. Author name is the field. Sorry. Right. So it gave me give me the author name here, G R R, and that guy. So you can do. all this kind of stuff you can manipulate some information and presentation in your template itself and uh, you can display it in a fashion that suits your design right uh, this is a very simple template you can obviously do a lot more stuff here you can add bootstrap css you can make it more fancy uh, you can give it a you know a, a header a footer a nav bar etc etc but we are not doing it for because of time constraint so i'll give you a brief overview of what is happening all all of this what we are doing what is happening and and this should tie tie the whole story together so we have so let's assume that uh, my web application my django application is stored on a remote server right it is stored somewhere in the cloud on a on a computer like this computer but somewhere with a public ip address in some data center right so Uh, what happens to to websites that are stored on the on the internet they have an ip address the ip address is a public ip address but because you don't want to remember and it is very hard to remember ip addresses uh, the folks who created the internet came up with a very uh, uh, you know uh, fancy way to deal with it they they basically tied a name with an ip address so that is your domain name so your facebook.com is basically something which has an ip address in the back but because you don't want to remember the ip address you can type in the name and your computer will do the translation of that name to the ip address right so in in my case my website is localhost which is basically just pointing to the ip address of my computer here so let's assume that this is a website name so that is the top level domain now when i access flash books what happens is i am accessing a particular url which i know exists this request is sent to my to my remote server which is in the cloud the remote server has the web application all you know all the fancy tools running on the server and it has a django app running so
basically this web app this run run server thing is happening on my remote server right when i hit this particular url my my browser sends an http request the http request contains the url that i want and it contains more information if that more information is included in this case there is no more information this is a, this is just a plain url and i am requesting for information from the server so there is no additional information now when this request reaches my server here what does my django web server do it received a request right when it re when it received a request this is these are how the re received request look like so it got a request saying you know it is telling me that you know i got a request for books via http and i am now going to send it back to you know i send back them send back a response right so it gets a re request like this the django application then understands that you know there is always going to be a url so the url needs to be checked so it goes to the url.py file where is my url.py file it is somewhere here in the library management right right here so it goes here now it will have a list of all the patterns that that exists for this particular application it will check does the incoming url request have admin in it no does it have books in it yes so which view should i trigger if i am supposed to do some computation which view should i go to so if if i get a request for this url i should be triggering the books function in my views file so now it goes to the views file it looks for the method books it runs all the code within books and when you say return render it creates a template out of the template that you have given here in html it adds all the context there that there's a templating engine that also runs in the background it packages all the data that it got in the context it sticks it into the template file so it is like creating a it is like creating a collage you have a you have a page you are going to stick all the all the data into the variables in the html template and once the template is created it will create a response object the response object is created in a certain fashion uh, that conforms to the http uh, you know protocol and the response is then sent back by django and it is thrown back to your browser because it knows that the request came from your browser so it goes through all the internet uh, connections and comes to your browser back uh, when it is sending the re response back the response contains the complete html that you have in books along with the context properly packaged right in between what happens uh, you are also doing some database query that is something that you added to your views.py so here when you are running the orm code the orm engine comes into play it sort of computes what query is being run it goes to the database fetches all the information that is necessary and comes back so this is how the database comes into the picture right so this is your full cycle of a you know request and a response that comes back and this is how django sort of evaluates things together and stitches all the files together and the reason why we have been filling in these very different different files together is because this is the flow that happens you get a request your urls.py is checked your views.py function is triggered your models.py you know queries are run on your models Uh, your templating engine creates a template based out of the template that you had stored in your templates folder, and then a response is created out of all this, and your uh, browser renders the response. Right? That is how your whole web application works, and that is why it is designed this way. Right? 